congratulations on it is quite remarkable that this is your seventh album i mean for goodness sake it's like honestly i mean you look 12 so oh, thank you John. <laughs> yeah man um you know like my friend um shikana remember mm -hmm. shikana yeah she's yep. still still doing her thing i love that girl yeah. i remember meeting her at a i think it was it was the writers camp the bmi writers camp yep. where i wrote a lot of the songs that ended up on in tandem and music exchange was going on at the same time. And we were all like involved in that. And we spoke at the conference and we had the writing sessions during the day and we didn't know each other, you know, and it was, and she used to say to me, yeah, you know how it, when you make an album, you die a little every time. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> I, I remember that. I remember that. She's like wise beyond her years, that girl. Yeah, and so talented, you know. I mean, like I loved working with her, and I kept I've kept in touch with her, and so and it's true, you know. You it's so much. There's so much work involved, and it does get overwhelming sometimes. And mm. you know, you have to just truck on, you know. Yeah, so, that's the nature of the industry that you signed up for. So you know, here we are. As I say, yep, album seven, weirdly called surrender, and not oddly, ironically, call it what you will. Um, what are you surrendering to? That is a good question, you know, uh, and that is exactly how it's meant. You know, it is not meant as a, as the, as in a sense of, of giving up, uh, but quite the opposite. It's letting go. So the idea is to surrender to, uh, you know, there are different themes on the on the record, you know, mm. as far as every song is every song is is different. Every Very song much. has a different theme. Mm. And but the surrendering uh involves the the approach of of taking a step back and um responding rather than reacting mm. to something, right? So yeah. It, it it involves controlling having more self-control um controlling your temper yeah um uh, relinquishing a the idea that uh or uh, or relinquishing situations or people that want nothing but your help and they are in need of it and I am someone that loves to do that. I love to help. I love to um, help others. And um, but helping others for the right reasons, you know, and that has that has been something that I've had to adjust mm -hmm. for myself, mm -hmm. where I've not let people near me that um, just want to, it's very one sided. And yeah. that can be relationship, it can be romantic, it can be in a professional sense. It happens on so many levels. So a, a lot of the thinking behind behind uh, the song, the title song, Surrender, mm -hmm. and, and the album um, reflects that. Yeah, yeah. And you've got 10, 10 tracks on there that are probably, and you can correct me, it's probably a four-year journey, probably longer for you in the songwriting and the creation of but it when you started that journey with surrender to where it's now been realized and on the 3rd of march obviously that's when all will <clears throat> excuse me all will be re revealed um there was no way that you could have scripted how this album would come together the people that you would work with um some people you've yet to meet um, that made this album possible. Yeah, I, I literally only just met the bass player on the record. Yeah, Max, Max Sternly, uh, <laughs> this guy, and and a, a great talent, you know. And but we couldn't, we couldn't, he, we couldn't work together, you know. During the pandemic, we couldn't, uh, we couldn't be in the same room, you know. They told yeah. us not to, and. Yeah. Uh, uh, it was, it's madness. It's madness. Let's face it. The whole thing. It's yeah, absolute madness. Stupid. But it, there's also, 
the, the situation was so real mm. and also um, so unknown. We didn't know how it, things were going to play out. And, you know, the pandemic played a huge role in the making of this record because my manager, may he rest in peace, Gary Salzman died from COVID mm. early on in the pandemic. I remember. Management, Gary Salzman, big management, who I had just signed with. I had signed with Gallo in South Africa to release In Tandem, my last album, yeah. um, which I made in South Africa at the Academy of Sound Engineering, which I'm going to be back at. Well, I just talked to Nick Matsukas over there, and I'm going to yeah. be back there on the 14th to do a workshop and a performance at SABC, April 14th at 2 p.m. <laughs> uh, That's very specific. You said so German. I know what, what, what I'm saying. It. <laughs> what do you mean? Like, zoom, and I will be there at two p.m. in the <laughs> afternoon, and I will look. Oh, by the way, and everything will be good with the world. Yeah, <laughs> I have an announcement to make. Yes. Uh, so thank God I've had my coffee. Cheers. Yes. Cheers. Uh, yes. Yeah, so mm -hmm. you know, it was it was a whirlwind. You know, like I I was in South Africa. I did the writing sessions. Shikana, Karen Zoid. Tamara Day, uh, Zion. I met R.J. Benjamin, mm. who produced uh, in tandem, uh, and and then I involved some of my uh, other artists that that I've worked with. Then uh, Annie Haslam from Renaissance and and so forth, and we started writing the songs that ended up on now the Surrender album, mm. South Africa, ironically, because the year after that. That we, uh, I did another BMI Writers Camp that was organized by uh, Brandon Bakshi and Martin Myers uh, Music Exchange. And uh, we wrote Love You the Most on the first day, which then was released by, through big management and uh, used to promote a movie, an Amazon movie called Married Young. Mm. And that really, uh, changed the game for me uh, over here once again, you know, like there'd been so many other instances, but that song really uh, did something here. You know, we got on top 40 radio for the first time and, and then tragically the pandemic hits, and this was in 2019 with love you the most. Mm -hmm. And um, the video, you know, blew up on YouTube and then we got it on top 40 radio and uh, uh, but that was even after that was after Gary passed. So uh, the pandemic hits 2020, and in the very beginning, Gary got sick. Everybody in the office got sick. Yeah, uh, at yeah. big management. Yeah, you know, I just signed with a year and a half before that. You know, yeah. in the fall of 2018. You know, yeah, um, it's crazy. It's just crazy. When I think back at it now, like I think like this all happened. You know, we had to go through all of this. You know? <laughs> but, but but I think that's the point is that because of what happened and how it happened, obviously, as you point out, it actively informed how you considered the creation of Surrender because you didn't trade on any part of the pandemic. What you did, as you do, and clearly lyrically and melodically with Surrender, everything about this album is ironically upbeat created at a time when everything was entirely downbeat. <laughs> That's a, thank you for saying that. You know, I, it is a very up album, you know, and, and a lot of that has to do with Alex Forbes, my co-writer mm -hmm. on most of six out of the 10 songs on the record. Mm -hmm. And Alex and I met after Love You The Most came out and blew up on YouTube and we'd already met, um, she is, uh, part of the Forbes family. Uh, Steve is her uncle, I believe. Yeah. Um, you know, she's a, a bit of an outlier in the family, uh, the, the Forbes family, Forbes magazine, et cetera. We like that. We like outliers. She's a bit of an outlier. Mm. and uh, But I met her 20 years ago when I first moved to New York on the Forbes yacht. <laughs> As one does. As one does, yeah. I mean, I had just moved to New York. I knew nobody. I knew nothing. I was so green. I was just out of school. You know, I was completely mm. uh, just, I had no idea what the hell I was doing. 
uh, or getting myself into. But I loved New York, you know, and I somehow got into a room with a, um, a then CNN uh, correspondent uh, named DeRoy Murdoch, um, who invited me to several events and and uh, and one of them was, hey, you know, what are you doing? Do you want to go for a ride on the Forbes yacht? And I said, Forbes, is that the magazine? <laughs> yeah. Hold on, I'll check, I'll, I'll check my calendar, yes. Yeah, up to West Point to watch uh, a West Point football game. As one does. And and I said, I said, you know, uh, uh, absolutely, you know, and <laughs> And it was really fun, actually, and it was very interesting. And the game was great, and you know, riding up the Hudson River. I mean, it was just mm -hmm. beautiful. And that's when I first met Alex Forbes, who had already written several hit songs. You know, she wrote Taylor Dane's uh, "Don't Rush Me." She's known for that, and she wrote a bunch of hits with um, uh, Nile Rodgers. And uh, she did, done she done a lot of a lot of songs. She's written hundreds of songs, and. And a lot of them have been placed in films and TV and, and so forth. And, and she's mm. done she did well for herself, you know, but very humble, one of the nicest people you'll ever meet. And uh, then we lost touch completely. And then we reconnected on Facebook. <laughs> as one one does. Yeah, again, as one does. Facebook. <laughs> Don't and and don't then she that. she reached out to me and she was like, I saw I Love You the Most, you know, I love that song. And and wow, you know, like it's got like millions of views on YouTube, amazing, you know. And I she was like, should we get together and write sometime? And I was like, absolutely. How have you been? You know, we got caught mm. up. And that was the first time we got together. And I knew who she was, obviously, and, and we'd met and but we we really lost touch. And we got together and we started writing. And I think one of the first songs we wrote was was surrender you know i want to say that, i want to say that one of the first songs we wrote was was surrender and i was like wow the the energy and we just had a writing session yesterday right here okay. over over, the over there okay very cool <laughs> and and uh you know i hadn't uh we hadn't seen each other because she actually is she moved upstate uh new york state yeah and we'd been doing the writing sessions at her apartment in uh, in Manhattan. Okay. And, and uh, she came here, she was in town and she was like, let's get together, let's write. You know, we were really do, we haven't written and we wrote a great song yesterday. It was a really wonderful experience. Yeah. Don't, don't tell, don't tell. Yeah, yeah. So she, uh, you know, we got together and we started writing these songs and mm -hmm. then the pandemic hits and we were like, what are we going to do? Are we going to not going to keep writing? And she was like, I already have COVID. You can come over. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, no joke and give i was like hug. give me a hug go. yeah you know and the, this is alex this is uh, this is alex like in a nutshell she's like fearless i just i love her yeah. and so we started getting together every other week and we just would just like pour everything that we were going through yeah. on a personal level on a professional level because everything was disastrous it was yeah and you know, I mean, everything was like, cancel this, cancel that show, cancel this show, cancel that. Fuck, this is not going to happen. Oh, you know, you're going to have to yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But because of that, you it guys got together, focused, and co-wrote what has become an album that, it, like, I go back to the original point, that that so much of it, at, at the time that you were writing it, you were cancelled. And yet you were writing these songs that were... You know, Cancel culture was everywhere. It was, it was real, and yet you you managed to realize an album that now makes complete sense because what you're delivering come the third of March is entirely it's the fuel that people are desperate to hear. But where you got that energy from at a time when there was no energy to be had is remarkable. Mm. Yeah, look, you know, it was um, always inspiring, you know, Sugar My, which was one of the singles, which, yep. we, which we also pushed to to radio here in the US and in South Africa. Mm. And it, uh, it did, it did, you know, it did pretty well here. It did, we got onto, I think, up to like number 36 on top 40 awesome. media charts in the US. And um, it was like a hot hit in on Jacaranda. Mm. In, in, mm -hmm. And Johannesburg, shout out to Jack Aranda for Danny Painter. We love you. Yeah, 
awesome. Yeah, you She's are much loved. Person. You know, you are much awesome. loved. But yeah, I mean, I think just the overall acknowledgement for each single that appears on this album. Um, I mean, I count four. So Surrender is the fourth, effectively. Yes. Yeah. So there's still six to go. Because each of them, each of them, and I said this to Mel earlier today, is that each one of them is a single. And mm-hmm. there are a few albums in the world that could claim potentially to have that kind of possibility. How do you feel about that? I, I look, I hope so. You know, I that's all. You know, every album, every release is it's nothing other than if not an offering Mm -hmm. that's how i feel about it right i this is what i'm this is what i do this is what i love it's i'm offering it and the rest of it is really out of my control you know there's there's only so much that i can do Mm -hmm. to i can go out on the road and promote the album like Mm -hmm. that's my job Mm -hmm. and have i have a great band to do that with Mm -hmm. you know we we are planning on doing just about every song every show as unless it's requested to be a solo acoustic show which some of them some of the shows are mm. um, specifically the, the the venue or the promoter uh, requests that mm. but if you don't we have I'll have a band I'll have a band with me and I have a great band and Marcus Dembinski who is the producer of the album co-producer yeah. He produced most of it. Yeah. David Schoenander is another producer on the on the album, as well. And then I co-produced, uh, you, you know, all of it. Mm. Um, so he's our music director, and he's a great instrumentalist as well. Mm. So, you know, I I I'm very lucky. I always dream about this. You know, bringing mm. the band that you make the record with, or people that you work on the record with, onto the road is like the best kind of, of situation you know you so really is alicia see. coming on the road as well alicia no <laughs> alicia is not <laughs> alicia is not a road person you know she doesn't do the road yeah no i love alicia she's the, the, you know one of my best friends uh, but alicia is not a road per- it's not for no. everybody the road is no. not for everybody I, as, I, as you know, no, I, I say that in jest but um, obviously her her contribution on surrender is is you know fundamental um and you know whether you're talking about you know the spanish version whether you're you know which is on the latter part of the record um but just her you know her contribution you know through collaboration i i I get a sense that this that this album you kind of you you invited your best friends to come and play with you and they did and magic happened uh, it it um that is a good that's a good way to put it you know i i want to be surrounded by people i trust and people that are talented and uh, people that are good communicators mm-hmm. and that is something that can be difficult mm-hmm. in the world in general but in the music business in the industry it can be very difficult some people yeah. just you know they want to do their own thing and they don't want to talk to you for whatever reason. And that's okay. Mm. You know, so you yeah. go around, you know, that's the, it's, it's another form of surrendering. You know, you go, if, well, if it's not going to be you, it's going to be someone, It'll be else. someone else. That's it. Move yeah. On. yeah. You know, and, uh, so, and yes, I did, you know, Marcus and Alicia, and David, Sean Wetter, um, Max, who I only just met who played bass. <laughs> um uh uh oh my god who, who i mean like i now i have to look at the uh that's that is that really is the core cyril putzer who is the engineer at studio g in brooklyn um alex vishnu who did all the videos who's doing we're working on another music video with him and maury levovitz who's runs honey rose records who release who is releasing the album um my south african peeps melissa conradi uh, yourself. Um, I mean, there there are so many people that that uh, that have a hand in it. But the the core group of of musicians and Marcus played all the drums as well. As by he, the way, like what? You know, I mean, so so it's acoustic electric guitar is um, a split between him and I. Okay. Acoustic is all me. Vocals, um, 
uh, he did drums, uh, Max played bass, uh, uh, Marcus programmed a lot of the keyboard stuff. We played some of the keyboard stuff uh, ourselves, you know, some of it him, some of it myself. Um, and then we had the guests, you know, like Alicia. And mm. uh, so it, it, it's a, it, it, we had a, um, a, uh, a Lyra uh, player okay. who is a Greek, a Greek musician uh, yeah. named Dimitris Menoxopoulos. Yep, very good. Also, who we also, who we found online. You, you know, see, and thank, thank goodness, weirdly, pandemic. ironically, for a pandemic, because if there hadn't been, I mean, this is kind of my point that I'm getting to, is that if the pandemic hadn't happened, this yeah. record would have been very different, right? We would have, let's see if I can get a little bit more light in here. There we go. Okay. Oh, yeah. there we go. That's a little bit more. That's good. No, that's good. Um, yeah, I mean, if that, we wouldn't have had to think outside the box, and we had to. You know, we really had to think outside the box, you know, and how do we do this given the circumstances? Yeah. And and the beginning really was Marcus and I getting together at his home studio or my home studio and sitting here and going, okay, let's let's program, let's arrange the song fully mm. and um, see how that, see what we can do with that. Let's see how that sounds, you know, with David and I, like we, we were worked, David Schoenwetter and I worked that way in the beginning as well. And um, and then we started adding the live instruments as we could. Mm. So when we were able to go back into the studio, mm. we booked into Studio G and we started adding live instruments to to just about everything. Yeah. And you know, it was uh, we got to basically make the record twice. <laughs> yeah. 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 No thanks to uh, things beyond uh, your control. Right. Yeah. Which. Again, it <clears throat> kind of talks to that, like you say, you had to stretch muscles that you hadn't considered you would need to stretch because you had worked in a particular way for six albums um, and it had worked beautifully and everything was good. And then all of a sudden, you know, you had to reimagine, you know, the unknown um, and then still have it make sense to, you know, the audience that loved the work that you had produced to that point. So um ultimately what surrender has delivered is probably your fittest album in the sense that you had to really reach and reach very very deeply on so many levels to deliver the quality and the the energy that these songs celebrate yeah look you know I think the exercise of reaching of what you're talking about is really mm. important if you want to be a writer mm. and you have to go deep, you know, and I work with talent, you know, I started producing myself and I coach, uh, I work with singers, I coach boys and, um, and I tell them the same thing. Yeah. I said, you have to go deeper. You know, if you want, if you want to get there, if you want to get somewhere, you have to go deeper. And, and when I was told that first, I was told that first about 10 years ago or so when I made the Mosaic album mm. in New Jersey with uh, with um, David Bendeth. Yeah. And, uh, James Frazee, David Bendeth famously, you know, uh, Paramore and Breaking Benjamin. And uh, um, he remixed all the, the Elvis number ones. Like that yep. was his. Yeah, that was his thing. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, so he, David Bennett, the, you know, monster producer. Hmm. And, uh, and he would tell me this when we were working together on Mosaic, you know, he, he, he said, you got to go deeper. You got to go deeper. This is not enough. I need more. I need more, more, more. I don't have any more. But yeah. now you and understand I'm, what that means, right? It means I have to be more vulnerable. You know, I have to yeah. show more of my fear yeah. and yeah. feelings and my emotions and my yeah. struggles. Yeah. And that's what I had to do. Yeah, that's the deal. Yeah. That's the contract. It hurts. <laughs> yes, but that's the point. And to his point, to what he was saying is that the second that that happens, in the same way that the pandemic hit <clears throat> and you were completely disarmed, you had to yeah. get on with it because you didn't have the luxury. And I remember <laughs> speaking to Josh Grogan <laughs> about this literally in November of 2020. Where you about this? Saying, sorry? Who did you speak to about this? Uh, Josh Groban. The singer? Yes, yeah, yeah. 
and 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 he was saying to me that yeah you kind of have to you've got to literally divorce everything that you had before yeah. because you are now alone so this is literally like you standing up on an, an audition night mm -hmm. for the first time you and yet you have this legacy but in that moment everything's been stripped away so if anything truly credible is going to come surrender is the result of that so because you 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 literally had your hands cut off your legs cut off everything was cut off but yet you persevered and i think to surrender is probably the most important statement in your career to date that says i've got i've dug deep enough to deliver the talent that is is within me and i and i i think you know that's that's something to affirm. Thank you. Uh, thank you for saying that, you know, I, that's what I hope people will get out of it, you know, um, and I hope they just enjoy it and listen to it and put, put some nice headphones on some nice ones. Yeah. <laughs> Personically, you know, it, I, it's a big thing for me. You know, I want my records to sound really, really good. And they do. This one in particular. I get a little bit better at it every time. You know, yeah. I want to get better. I want to learn. I want to grow. I, and uh, I mean, I think Marcus did a tremendous job. Marcus Dabinsky. I mean, this guy is so talented and he's young and he's no, new. You know, this is one of the first uh, albums that he's produced as an album. And oh, really? uh, yeah, he's from uh, Massachusetts. He's from Boston and uh, he lives here in, in Manhattan and um i think he just he even just texted and we have a call going on like you know after this yeah but yeah, yeah i mean he's so talented this this kid and um and i'm so lucky that he 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 came along and created this sonically you know we really started i i, I took some risks that i haven't had in the past you know i tried some new things and i you know on on a couple of those of the songs and and I wanted to do it you know and he's like what about if we do this you know you feel comfortable with doing something like this you know this is a little bit out of your uh, may feel like it's a little bit out of your wheelhouse but like mm -hmm. what do you think you know and he would he would give these ideas and I would I would say I think I think it's great let's let's try it you know let's see if it works and um we tried a lot of stuff we had time to try stuff yeah. you know it's just him and I. And, How much time do you and need? I love have all the time. Yeah. yeah the yeah. one thing, you know, is if I work well like that. You know, it's um, in in some ways it was actually easier to make a record like this because it's, it wasn't twenty people in a room. Yeah. You know, which with in tandem we had, you know, I mean we always had like a half a dozen at least or dozen more uh, or more people in the room. Yeah. working on the record you know and it was that was <laughs> making that almost killed me <laughs> yeah like, because it's, it's it's weirdly distracting whereas what you had through the process of creating surrender was that you had this weird kind of um quiet to focus on creating these songs and then working with these people for the most part initially remotely and then you know kind of creating a relationship you know, um, digitally, and then being able to connect connect with them ultimately, you know, emotionally and physically. You know, never again in the history of the world, I hope that that Hopefully. will ever be the case. <laughs> yeah, I know. So that's me. Yeah, I'm on the cheap version. Um, I like Jason is an optimist. That's that's good. No, I, I I just think that I don't think that you'll ever create an album like this again, nor should you. Um, which you know is exciting in so many ways because i think your approach moving forward you're going to take so much of the journey more recently that you've traveled and you're going to apply that to the work that you do in the future yeah i mean there's certainly you know just talking to you about it now is uh, revealing to me you know because it was really it, it really was tough yeah. these last couple of years you know yeah. it really was and a lot happened that that was difficult and yeah. painful yeah. you know um complicated you know mm. there were a lot of challenges and um 
but we got through it somehow. But what somehow you did, what you did that I that I applaud is that you reimagined, reinvented, reimagined, reinvented multiple times and you you tapped into every available platform for inspiration and motivation um you know whether that was you know making sound or whatever it was you 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 did not you you literally flipped the bird to the reality and said okay i've been we, we've all been fed this i'm going to i'm not gonna i'm not gonna fall over you know the videos of you walking through central park or wherever it was that you were walking and being this kind of <clears throat> you had nothing musically to say but you did have something to say and you took your audience with you through what everyone was going through um but it was always positive it was always whether you were probably crying inside at the time but you but did, not just inside <laughs> <laughs> But but how glorious and 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 I and I think you know I'm, <laughs> yeah probably you do, you don't even realize it but it, you hear it in the songs is that you you kind of just you you beat against it and you were going no there is a way out and we can prevail because human nature is such that the good will out you had it in you and you had to dig deep probably deeper than you ever thought you needed to at a time of your career, six albums in, that you shouldn't have needed to have dug necessarily that deep, but yet you did. And you kind of went right back to the core of what got you started. And mm -hmm. you delivered it in a way that has all, the, all of the sophistication, all of the relationship, all of that. And you've delivered an album that could go anywhere from Americana to pop rock to, in some cases, rock. There's just so much potential in this record. Thank you. Yeah. You mentioned uh, making sound. <laughs> Was that intentional? <laughs> well, I watched it. I'm a fan. Thank you. Yeah. So, yeah. Two episodes and counting, I believe, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, I mean, that was another thing. I started a podcast called Making Sound. And yes, it's still going. I'm not one of those people that started a podcast during the pandemic and then ended it. You had a break over Christmas. Let's just put that out there. I do I do take breaks and I don't do quite as many episodes, but but I love doing it, you know, and I get to talk to super interesting people. Yeah, who inspire you. Who inspire me, you know. Uh, I had Legan, Legan Breida, who's well, the wow. drummer on tandem on who is uh, the house drummer at the idols south africa yes. I, love that guy. I just yeah. love that guy and he was so much fun to talk to and he's such a force of life man you know yeah. drummers um, gotta love drummers yeah he, drummers are the best and uh it, they're just they're all characters and they're 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 usually a good time you know yeah. they're good so uh, i have a new drummer i work with here pedro mila who's brazilian uh, the and, best drummers in the uh, world. Oh my word! He is. When I saw him play, I was like, I have to get that guy. Yeah, His time. They have, rhythm. they have rhythm. Yeah, that and the Argentinians. Yeah, yeah. perfect. Yeah, I was. His time was just so oh. on. Yeah, so I, I started working with a new drummer. But, but yeah, look, you know, it it was a. Um, we made that. I think we made the best of it. And hopefully we can keep doing that. Hopefully we can play uh, a lot of shows um, all over. I'm excited to come to South Africa to play again. I just finally started playing in Germany again. We had a show there over the over the uh, holidays uh, mm. in December. It was packed, and we just announced it a day before. You know, it was yeah, it was wonderful and. We have some great shows coming up stateside for, for the album release shows in New York, May 7th, Connecticut, May 4th, Pennsylvania, May 25th, Ohio. Um, there'll be other ones, April April 28th, that's the Ohio show. And then we have the South African uh, events and shows that we're doing, which yeah. are going to be a lot of fun, I'm sure. Um, Cape Town, Durban, Splashy Fen, uh, Pretoria, Johannesburg. So I think I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Brazil, I'm going to tour in Brazil for the first time this year. Wow. 
later on this year. Yeah, I've just uh, just started working with a new promoter there. So we're working on setting that up. Germany will be there in June, at the end of June, I think. So, you know, it's going to be a lot of uh, back to, uh, you know, back to life, are back you, to reality. Are you, are, yeah, there's a song in there. There's a song in there. But, but, but are you... Are you excited? Because, I mean, of course you are, but, um, <clears throat> you know, it's kind of daunting in a way because you've had this, we've all had an excuse for the longest time and now all of a sudden there is no more an excuse. Um, but yet you've got this extraordinary body of work um, that if I were you, I mean, these songs on Surrender Live are just going to do extraordinary things. I mean, if I were you, you must be so excited at how they're going to realize themselves in a live space. I am. And we just did a show here in New York. It was a private event, but we filmed it and recorded it. And, uh, you know, it was the first time I played with, with the new band. And it was, it was great. You know, it was the, I missed the adrenaline, mm. you know, you know, I'm sort of an adrenaline junkie, you know, I'm mm. a runner and I, I love that energy on stage. And then when you walk off, you're just like so high yeah. from the performance. And so, um, but yeah, look, it, it's not, it's not an easy thing to do. It's not an easy life. You know, you have to spend a lot of times on planes, which isn't always fun, no. <laughs> but that's the perfect birth control. That's the contract. That's the contract. It's <laughs> like, well, <laughs> you want it? That's oh. the contract. Yeah. yeah. So that's the other side. Um, I always say, yeah, if, you, if you're thinking about having children, uh, fly, fly on planes a few times first. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it. Yes, that that yeah. will kill it for you. But so, what... Uh, what is the what is the most exciting part for you just in closing just with um obviously it's a it's an exciting time to be young close at this point because you've got a brand new album dropping on march 3rd you've got a you know you've got a tour that's going to extend through the better part of the year but what are you hoping this chapter is going to bring for you well i'm sure it'll be another a big learning experience because it always is because there's always challenges on the road and you have to face them and you have to deal with it so uh that that is you know hopefully i'm going to be better at dealing with those you know because they they're um they're, they're always there um you know i'm i'm looking forward to meeting new people mm. i love meeting new people you know and you always have them. yeah you always have mm. Know, and friendships and connections and uh, th that 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 is exciting to me to to look forward to because you just don't know who and what and who's going to be in the room yeah who's, who's going to be, be in the room, room. And, and i like that that you know that's that's the adventure of it you know plus the traveling and seeing seeing places that i love to to see exactly. so you are truly surrendering in the I'm trying, man. Every day. Every day. <laughs> I'm trying. 